This video will show you how to perform diaphragm ultrasound. First, we need to position the probe so that we can visualize the diaphragm in the zone of apposition, which is the cylindrical region of the diaphragm that touches the lower rib cage. With the subject in the semi-recumbent position with the head of the bed between 30 to 45 degrees, we landmark on the right-hand side at the mid-axillary line in the 10th intercostal space. Using a high-frequency linear array transducer, place the probe on the patient such that the entire tip of the probe is sitting between the ribs, with the left side of the probe pointing towards the patient's head. Hold the probe with your index finger and thumb wrapped around the tip of the transducer so that when you place the probe on the patient, your hand is in contact with their body. This will help stabilize your hand to acquire images. We can identify the diaphragm as a three-layered structure. The diaphragm muscle is the hypoechoic portion in the middle, sandwiched by two hyperechoic layers, the pleural and peritoneal membranes seen above the liver. We measure the diaphragm as a three-layered structure. Watch the diaphragm structure slide and contract during respiration in this 2D ultrasound image. Seeing which structures are moving together will help you to discern which lines are the top and bottom of your diaphragm. Try the following three adjustments to the probe. One, up and down within the same rib space. Two, tilting the base of the probe back and forth. or three, rotating the entire probe within the rib space. Notice as I go over a rib, you see a black shadow. No, we want the probe to be entirely between ribs in an intercostal space, so you should not have any black shadows in your image. If you still cannot image the diaphragm, try moving to a different intercostal space. On the ultrasound, you can adjust the following settings. Gain will adjust the brightness of the image. You'll notice as I increase the gain, the image is getting a lot brighter. And if I decrease the gain, the image is getting darker and the contrast between lines is improving. If you're doing a study on echogenicity, the gain should be left the same across repeated images. So on this ultrasound machine, I'm going to turn the gain up to the default setting. You can also adjust depth. Reduce the depth to maximally enlarge the diaphragm on your screen. This will ensure greater accuracy when placing markers to measure thickness. You can also adjust the focus, just like on your camera. You can help the ultrasound converge waves at a certain point. Change the setting to have one focus level and move this to the level of the diaphragm or just below. Adjust your probe to get a good diaphragm image, meaning the lines are parallel to the bottom of the screen, the peritoneal and pleural membranes are clear and continuous lines, and the depth is minimized. To measure the thickening fraction, place the ultrasound in M-mode by hitting M-mode twice. This will allow us to measure one section of the diaphragm over time. Leave the M-mode marker in the middle of the screen. This is the default position. This way, we can measure the exact same part of the diaphragm in the exact same position daily. When you press M-mode again, the machine will be put into its time course. Once the patient takes two breaths, press freeze. Before moving your probe from the patient, mark the probe on the patient using a marker to indicate the bottom angle of the probe. This is crucial. By marking the position of the probe, we can confirm that we are measuring the same part of the diaphragm each time. First, you need to get a reference measurement on the 2D image. This measurement will give us an estimate of how thick the diaphragm is. On the 2D image, place your markers right on the M-mode vertical scan line because that is the slice of the diaphragm that was measured over time. Place your markers on the pleural and peritoneal membranes, making sure that the markers are on the outermost part of each membrane without going over. Now going back to M-mode, start by measuring the end expiration thickness of the diaphragm. Always measure end expiration before inspiration occurs. Place your markers such that the center of the marker goes to the outermost part of the membrane without going over. Be aware of the timestamp. Since M-mode is measured over time, imagine that there is an x-axis at the bottom for time, and be sure to stack your markers one on top of another so there is no difference in time between them. Next, measure the peak of mid-inspiration, or the point where the diaphragm thickens the most. Again, place your markers such that the center of the markers are going to the outermost part of each membrane without going over. Repeat this again for another breath. 
Note, your end expiration and only these values should be within 10% of one another. If they are not, go back and repeat your ultrasound image. 